Hi y'all, Justin with Kite Catfish. Well, it is sunrise and I am on the water. And I tell you what, it turned cold here in East Tennessee, but we're gonna get after them big cats today regardless. We're going after big blues and big flatheads and hopefully lots of them. But right now, trying to get us some bait and making my way up here to this bridge. There's been some skipjack feeding around this bridge and I'm trolling a couple rigs right now, which you probably can't see because of the light here off the side of my kayak. And we're gonna to try to get us some fresh skipjack and then get out there and go after these cats. We'll probably start at the end of this creek out here and see if we can get us some cats. So anyway, I'm gonna finish trolling around here, see if I can get us some bait and then we're gonna get after them today, y'all. Let's go have some fun. All right, y'all, here we go. Finally hooked up with one. I've been trolling all over out through here. I ain't seen no skipjack action. I ain't caught any, but I got one right here. We're gonna hopefully land him here and get us something to bait a hook with. Oh, we got two actually. We got two. Oh goodness gracious, let me get them in here before I fling them off. There we go. Nice, man. All right, just like that, we got a couple skips. That's a start, man. I was getting discouraged. I, it's the challenge of coming out catfishing when you ain't got no bait. Is if you can't catch nothing, well, you ain't going catfishing that day. <laughs> but we got us a couple right there, man. All right, let me get spun back around. I was working around that bridge and just wasn't... I wasn't seeing nothing, wasn't catching nothing. And so I kind of come over here in this shallower area here, this mud bottom, and we'll see what we can get going there. Crap, I forgot to show you it's my skipjack rig before I threw it back out. As soon as I catch some more here, I'll show you that, but by gosh, I gotta get back on the move. That sun over there is about to peak up, and lately, I've been getting these skips right at sunrise, really before sunrise. And when the sun gets up, that bites like a light switch. It just shuts off. And so the later it's getting here, as the sun comes up, the more discouraged I was getting. Like, man, we ain't gonna get no bait today, but at least now we got two and those right there, are pretty good size right there. So we at least gonna be able to bait a hook for some catfish this morning. Look at that sunrise over there, folks. That is a beautiful sight, ain't it? Well, except when you're trying to catch you some bait before sunrise, it ain't so good seeing that sun as quick as I am, but beautiful nonetheless. Low humidity, clear skies, absolutely gorgeous sunrise here in East Tennessee today. Well, the skipjack action has been minimal out here today. Feel fortunate to catch the two that I've gotten because I just ain't see anything. I'm not seeing any activity not really seeing any shad flipping. I've seen uh, some carp and some buffalo come up, but that's about it. So I, I don't know if this weather, I mean, it's, we've had this little cold snap here. I don't know if that's kind of got them shut down. Maybe it's more of an afternoon, evening bite right now, but either way, the skips ain't having nothing of it today. But the two that we've got here, pretty good size. I think we can probably get probably eight baits out of those. So that's enough to catch a catfish with. So I'm gonna get set up out here from this bridge. Since the bait activity is so sparse today, if you, if you will, I guess I'm, I'm running out of adjectives. It's too early in the morning for me to be thinking and too cold for the brain to be working properly. But since bait has, activity's been limited, I'm thinking maybe the catfish activity is gonna be limited too. So the recent trip I fished out here and got on some big cats. One day I'd started at the top of the drop where this creek comes out and then moved out deeper, got some better quality fish. Then I come out before that front come through and started on the deeper part of the drop and got a bunch of fish. So we're just gonna start at the deeper part today too and hope some fish are kind of staged up out here. So let me show you before I, I know I teased y'all was seeing my skipjack rig and then I didn't end up reeling any more in. The skip said, ha ha, Justin jokes on you. I'll show you that right quick and then I'm gonna anchor down and we're gonna get after some cats. We're gonna make the most of these two baits we got, but this is my skipjack rig. This is just one eighth ounce jig heads. I've got 
some plastics on there. Those are crappie magnets. They're like an inch and a half long, white and chartreuse. I've got two of them on there in a series. And when I'm trolling for skipjack like this, I'm in my pedal kayak today, so I don't have a graph. I can't monitor my speed, but I know just my normal casual pedaling speed is usually somewhere between like two and a half miles an hour ish give or take somewhere between two and three miles an hour which is perfect ideal trolling speed for skipjack when you're on them and they're feeding it's the ideal speed so uh i know i can cast around or cast behind me just a normal cast link troll around through those schools and be able to catch them without having a graph to set a specific speed on but anyway I'm gonna get set up out here. Gonna be about 60 feet-ish at the bottom of this drop where I'm gonna set up. I'm gonna use a phone app called Navionics. It's got lake contour maps and for this area, it's pretty accurate. So I'm gonna use it to find the bottom of this ledge where the old creek channel would have come up to go back up in here before they flooded all this to make the reservoir. I'm gonna get set up there and we're gonna fish with two rods today. I'm gonna put a head and a chunk of the skipjack on and suspend them right off bottom. And hopefully we're gonna drop them right into some big catfish's faces. Well, I'm approximately where I think I need to be. So got my trusty dumbbell here. It's what I use to anchor a kayak when I'm fishing slack water or minimal current. We're gonna drop it down there and we're gonna get set up by gosh. I didn't let out enough, do you see that? I'm trying to show you all this on camera. Didn't let out enough rope. I was a couple feet short. That's a uh, extension cord holder. Makes a very cheap and compact, efficient way to store your anchor rope in a kayak. Just FYI. Well, next, let's get our bait on here. We're going to take a big head, apparently. These are some nice skipjack. We'll take that. What I'll probably do is do a, a big bait and a small bait. Since that head bait is the big bait... What I'll do is we'll cut this gut pocket out. It's going, you see this, when you got a fresh skipjack, you see all them guts just fall out anyway? I'm going to cut this belly meat off there. And we'll still have a nice healthy chunk of skipjack. Real, I mean, super bloody there from where it's so fresh. All them oils in there and everything, but uh, we'll have just a slightly more smaller compact bait and then our big head bait on there. Again, I'm going to just suspend them right here under the kayak. So if we're 60 feet deep, my baits are going to be 57, 58 feet deep. Okay, I got thumped hard right there. He's got it, buddy. Oh man, he's got it. We're hooked up, y'all. I can't get the rod up the rod hole. There we go. There we go on the head bait. I have sat here a good while, y'all. Just nothing happening. But we got a good one on right here, man. That's on the head bait. The bait has been nipped at a few times. Just smaller fish. Nothing on the, on the chunk. It should be in perfect condition down there. But this one right here, man. This feels like a doozy, buddy. Oh man, this feels good, y'all. <laughs> the skipjack may have let us down, but we getting a, we're gonna get a good fish here with one of them skips that we got. Yeah, I didn't really know what to expect coming out here with this temperature drop. You know, I had a a good bite going there in recent videos morning hours man he's taking some line but with this change you know who knows what's going to happen maybe feeding at different times they may have moved a little bit never know but places like this i'm fishing today you know you, you get on these ledges right in front of where creeks come in i mean those are seven day a week 365 day a year type of places big fish could be coming through in and out of there at any given time you put time into these spots you're going to get rewarded regardless of weather water conditions whatever man this thing's strong let's see if i can get this camera adjusted a little bit here i'm using my new camera that i'm trying out today Filmed with it on a recent ultralight video. It's a DJI 
Osmo Action 4 and my camera mount situation here is struggling a little bit. We'll get it dialed in if I end up going with this camera going forward. This fish don't give a crap about what kind of camera mount problems we're having. <laughs> he's just he's just mad, buddy. Yeah, that's a good one. I saw his tail right there. I didn't see all of him, but I got a glimpse of his tail. He's a good one. Come up here, fish. Oh, yeah, nice. Nice fish right there, man. That head bait is still intact, too, so we may be able to reuse it. Wouldn't that be nice? How awesome would that be? Let's get down here and get a look at this thing. Man, nice kitty right there, buddy. Nice kitty. I'm glad to see you. Where you been, fish? What do you think, fish? You ready to come in? He says, not yet. <laughs> he says, not yet. Oh, come here, buddy. Yeah, okay. You got to calm it down now. We're coming inside. Indoor behavior. Oh, man, that's just a good fish, y'all. This is a good one. I got to find them pliers get that hook out. But that's a good one. This makes me happy. We have had to struggle all dang morning out here. But by gosh, we made it happen. All right, y'all. We got us one fist pump worthy right here. Let me lift this thing up, man. Oh, my camera's crooked. That's all right. We're going to roll with it. Nice, man. <laughs> oh, nice blue cat. This is so worth the wait. I mean... I don't know how long I've been set up out here catfishing, but it's been a while and just, you know, a nip here or there on that head bait, just nothing happening. And all of a sudden, boom, big takedown, big fish. <laughs> Love it, man. Love it. Oh, it makes me happy. All right, well, here's what I'm going to do, y'all. I'm going to let this thing go. I'm going to check out this head bait. If it looks okay, we're going to drop it back down because we got to make use of every piece of bait. If it's looking rough, I'll put that other head bait on and just keep that one in case we end up needing. That's probably what I'll do anyway. Just go ahead and cut that other one and we'll keep that in case we lose the other one or end up needing it. But man, this fish right here, if he's got some friends with him, we're going to need some more bait. <laughs> All right, big blue, you big bruiser. There he goes. He's gone. Oh man, definitely fist pump worthy right there, y'all. Definitely. Man, that's awesome. <laughs> All right, let's check out our bait, see what's happening here with it. I, I think we're going to switch it out regardless. Man, oh man. That is so much fun, y'all. I mean, when you feel that, that thump and you see your rod going down and you feel your kayak starting to lean a little bit, man, that's fun. That feeling never gets old. All right, let's take a look here. Yeah, I mean, it's still, it's bled out a lot. It's kind of blanched there. I'm going to go ahead and just switch it out. Like I said, we'll keep it in case, in case we end up needing it, but we'll put that fresh bait on. And that'll give us some more blood and scent down there. Here's our other skipjack. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, I'm going to just refresh both baits. And that other chunk that's on the other rod, I mean, it has not, nothing has touched it. I mean, I haven't had a single peck on it. But I'm going to keep it, too, just in case these fish turn on and we end up needing it. But I'm going to do the same setup, just a head and a chunk. I'm only running these two rods. So that's what we're going to end up rolling with today. And we put enough time in, we're liable to catch another one out here. My rig here today, same as always when I'm fishing vertical or suspend fishing, I got a Carolina rig that's an 8 ounce egg sinker down to a swivel, 80 pound monofilament down to my hook, and then I've got a Catfish Sumo bait stalker fly just a few inches below the bait. We're going to drop this down, let it hit bottom, and then raise it up so it's sitting there two or three feet off the bottom, which again should be 57, 58 feet deep is where our bait will ultimately be in 60 feet of water. Got 40 pound test monofilament for my main line. Got my, of course, my signature series rod here, the Golly Whopper from Catfish Sumo, Shimano Reels. 
we're set up, man. I'm gonna reel in this other bait here. And we'll switch it out. Just get a fresh piece on, get some, get some more scent going down there. We don't have, I mean, technically there is some current out here this morning. They're running water at the dam, but where I'm at, the, the current flow is just minimal. You're just barely getting any water movement. So this bait, I mean, you can see literally nothing's touched it. It's just an inactive morning for both the cats and the bait so far. But, like I said, you put in enough time on places like this, it's not if you're going to get bit, it's when you're going to get bit. And even though it's not an active day, we've, we've got us one good one. So, I'll take quality over quantity anytime. But here we go again now. Here we go again on the head bait. That fresh head we just put down. That's two now. That's two on the head. I hope he leaves it on there too. I hope he don't sling that one off. It still should be good and fresh since we just had it down there a few minutes. <laughs> when you short on bait, Typically how it goes is the fish throw off every piece off the hook. That last fish was nice enough to leave the that other head on, but it was pretty well blanched out there. That's one thing about using really fresh bait is it, is it tends to bleed out a little quicker than bait that you've either frozen or even just chilled in your cooler. And the, and the blood and stuff, it says time to coagulate this one here i don't think is going to be nearly as big as his friend but it's another bite and i'll tell you what after sitting here as long as i did with nothing going on that's two fish pretty quick we may be these fish may be turning on possibly or we've got some working through it may just be a, a later morning bite here today we set up and ready for them whenever they want to feed oh i just pulled it out of his mouth now he's gone, but we got the quick release on that as us trying to bring him in. I don't even know if he had that hook. I think he may have just had that bait wedged in his mouth. All right, well, we didn't want no picture with that one, no way. We just do the quick release on him. The bar's been set too high for us to want a picture with that fish. Let's get this head bait back down there real quick. At least we still had it on, so we'll get it down there and be ready for the next fish. But that's two. Pretty quick, y'all, so I'm getting more optimistic by the second. So while we're between fish, I would love to get some feedback from my regular audience members. I mentioned recently, this time of year in the fall, hunting season, football season, people ain't watching YouTube fishing videos as much. And so this time of year, it kind of gives me an opportunity to try out new gear, try out new techniques and stuff, and, and try to get stuff dialed in before we go into the busy season on YouTube. So one of the things I'm doing this year is I'm trying out a new camera. I've got the DJI Osmo Action 4, and I'd filmed with this camera on my recent ultralight trip, and that was kind of a foggy, kind of dreary day. And so I wanted to come out here today, which just complete opposite conditions. It's a bright sunny day today, very few clouds blocking the sun and kind of get some feedback from my regular audience members on how this camera compares on a day like today to my other GoPro camera. Now this camera has a larger sensor in it than the GoPro. It's actually the largest sensor of any action camera right now. So the low light periods like this morning when I was first doing my intro before dawn, that footage should be a lot more crisp than the GoPro. It shouldn't be nearly as grainy in those darker conditions. But the camera overall on my ultralight trip, it performed great. The battery life was amazing. No issues with overheating, which is a constant problem with the GoPro. Those of you out there, I know a lot of my audience, you got your own YouTube fishing channels or you're filming stuff for TikTok or Instagram or just you know your own personal enjoyment there for your family. GoPro, man, if you're filming in direct sun or on a hot day, it just fries. It overheats. This DJI Action 4, it don't overheat at all, so that's nice. Ain't nothing more frustrating 
than be in the middle of fighting fish and you hear that camera shut off and you got to stick your GoPro down and your cooler down in the ice to shut it off there or get it cooled off. Nothing more frustrating than that. So anyway, this camera, so far so good. I got the microphone today, so it was a little windy at times and we've had some helicopters. I don't know if there's been helicopters or planes going over when I've been reeling in fish, but this camera or the microphone, it, it should eliminate a lot of that external noise out here from the wind and environmental stuff it should focus more on my voice so uh, overall i'm pretty happy with this camera but i would love to get the feedback from my regular viewers y'all are what drives the bus around here what you all think it matters to me so if you're a regular viewer i'd love for you to comment down in the comment box thank you to everybody who watched the ultralight video and commented about the camera there but I'd love to get your opinions here on a day that's really op complete opposite conditions as what we had on the ultralight trip. So anyway, enough of me flapping my gums about the camera. Let's sit back and relax, see if we can catch us another fish. By gosh, that head bait again. Nothing will touch a chunk today, but the head just keeps getting hit, man. I've sat here a while, y'all. I've sat here a while. I've had nothing going on after them two fish come through. But I'm just I'm just logging hours today, man. My plan is to fish till about lunchtime. And hopefully some fish gonna turn on or move through during that time. And I'm gonna be here if they do, and we got us another one. This fish here, he's he's missed his breakfast. This is more of a brunch. He's a brunch eater. My regular viewers know how I feel about brunch eaters. <laughs> Come over here, fish, and don't sling that head off either. Let's see if we can actually land this one here, if he's going to pop free at the side like that last fish did. He's got that bait wedged in his mouth too, buddy. Look at that thing, man. That thing, that head bait is sideways in there. I don't know if he's got the hook or not or if he's just wedged. Come in here. Come in here and act like somebody. Yeah, I think you actually had the hook in addition to having that bait wedge. Oh, 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 hey, 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 we talked about indoor behavior fish. Now, hey, now, uh, now. Well, I told that fish to act like somebody. Look how he's doing me. You got that stinger hook in the side, too. You wasn't going nowhere, even if you tried. And boy, he did try. <laughs> Man, ornery fish. Hold yourself up there, fish. Lord Almighty. Well, my camera's crooked again, y'all. <laughs> I've got that mount set up for my other camera. We just, we're rolling with it today. We're improvising with that. He's a fun sizer, though. I mean, that's a what I call a fun size fish. He's got a golly whopper kind of attitude, though, don't he? Coming in here, acting like that. I'll try and do that. And now he splashed me with water, too. <sighs> Dang old fish, man, he's got a bad attitude. He's trying to break everything in here and splashes me with water on the way out. Thankfully, though, what he didn't do was knock that head bait off. We still got it on here. We're going to take a look at it. I think, I think this bait here, yeah, it's in better shape than that other head that I got. So we're going to drop it back down. I'm gonna stick with that same setup, the, the head and chunk. I don't have any other heads to put on and for whatever reason, the chunk bag just ain't getting hit. They just, they ain't wanting nothing of it today. It's like that sometimes, you know, these fish will show you a preference to one bait or another and I usually just try to, you know, give them whatever it is that they're wanting, but our options being so limited today, they pretty much got what's down there, so anyway. There is our bait. Goodest condition as it's gonna get the rest of the morning. Back down it goes. We'll see if we can't get another one on it. Oh, buddy, my chunk got hit here. Oh, did he drop it? I think he dropped it. Let me pick up here. He hit it hard, I think he dropped it. Oh, oh no, no, he's still on there. He's still on there. He'd come up in the water column with it. He tricked me. This daggone fish tricked me right here, man. Oh, you silly fish, you, you ain't getting away like that now. Nailed that bait. 
And I thought he dropped the daggone thing, but he had come straight up in the water column with it. <laughs> well, we finally got us one on the chunk. Nothing has touched this. I mean, not a dink tap, nothing. This bait has had the plague this morning or something. They just ain't wanted nothing to do with it. It's like the grape nuts in the cereal aisle at the grocery store. Ain't nobody buying no grape nuts. Nobody wants any of that mess. That's how they felt about it today. But This one here won't even bite. This fish here so he ain't turning down no free meal. I don't blame you. I'm the same way. I go stay at a hotel, even if that continental breakfast ain't very continental, I'm still going to eat a bite because it's free. Man, he's taking back off now. Goodness gracious, he's strong. This is another one with a bad attitude right here. Some of them fish like that, they got a, they got a mean streak in them. Get him up here and we're gonna give him a stern talking to about how he's acting. Yeah, that's another good fish. That's another good one right there, man. He's not gonna be as big as that first one, but I think he's gonna be the second biggest of the morning so far. Yeah, yeah, he is. Good fish. I'm gonna have to play him out here a minute. Oh, oh, I think something's after my Something is. Something's got the head bait now. Let's set this one back in the rod holder. Let's pick up on this one now. We doubled. Doubled up. We'll leave our we'll leave our other cat sitting there. Y'all put your sunglasses on. I'm, uh, this fish has turned us right into the sun right here. <laughs> get your sunscreen and get your shades. Get you one of them old them old beach hats too. You're going to need it. It's a bright, sunny day. Happy to see that sun, too. I'm tell you, it's cold this morning. A few months from now, 40 degrees won't feel all that cold. But when it first starts to turn in the fall, them first few times you go out on a cold morning, it feels colder than it is because it's a shock to the system. Your body ain't used to it. So it, it felt cold on my bones this morning. All right, we should be, yeah, this one here is going to be smaller than the one on the chunk. I think we're going to try to land this one first because I don't want him throwing that head bait off. I'm afraid if we leave him setting, he'll, oh, he ain't got the head no way. He's on the stinger. He's got that stinger fly. Let me see where he's got this fly at. I can't see if he's, if he's, if he's foul hooked with it. Or if he's just got it in the mouth. Let's get over here. We got to... I do not want to lose this head bait. I'm afraid he's going to fling it off. Where you hooked that fish? Oh, he's hooked up under the mouth. This one here. We're going to give this one a quick release here if we can. Just because I don't want to lose that bait. Yeah, he's up under the mouth. There you go. All right, here's, here's what let's do, y'all. We got the other fish on the other line over there. I'm going to get all the slime. Man, he slimed that line up real good. I don't think, the fish don't care about that slime, but it annoys me, so we're going to get that off there. Bait's still hooked good. We're going to drop it back down real quick. So we ain't got a bait down there right now. When you're only fishing two rods, you got two fish on, you got nothing down there, and there could be more fish working through with these. We could have had a school of them come through, possibly. So I'm going to drop it back down. We'll land our other one over here. Come here, fish. Uh -huh. That's a good one, buddy. That's a nice fish. I am happy to get this. He's left us the bait on, too. How nice are these fish today? Most of the time when you short on bait, they're going to throw it off every time. And all these fish, it's like they're, it's like they're showing mercy on me today. <laughs> all right, man. Hold yourself up there, fish. Show yourself off to the world. 
Nice, man. That's, just, that's a good fish. He was a battle, man. <laughs> yeah, it's. I mean, it's. it's been a slow morning out here, especially there at sunrise and first light. I mean, there was just nothing going on, but it's like the later we've got in the morning here, the more active these fish are getting, the more they're turning on, and we're right here waiting on them as they as they either work up and down this ledge or as they go into or out of this creek we're set up right here to take advantage of them and catch them and got another good one right here all right buddy what do you say we let you go he says that's the best idea he's ever heard of going out of here hey gone all right y'all i'll give that one a fist pun too so i'm gonna i'm gonna go ahead and switch out this chunk over here just put a fresh piece on it's got some blood and oil in it but again i'm going to keep this piece in case we end up needing it we'll have it we'll be able to recycle it and put it back down there all right let's get another chunk here i'm going to do the same thing with this one i'm going to just cut that gut pocket out it's going to fall out on the way down through there anyway now this piece here has got that fin on the back of it. So I like to take my pliers or scissors there in my other kayak and cut that off there. That fin, there's always a chance that fin could possibly interfere with the barb on your hook and cost you a fish. My feeling is if it cost me one fish throughout the year, it's one too many. That fin does nothing otherwise as far as you know presentation or scent or anything so this bait here i mean you can see it's it's kind of widened out there if we squeeze it a little bit you can see there's still more blood in there and more oils and stuff but i'd just rather have a new a new fresh piece on there and we'll save it if we need it great we got it and if we don't well we know we've got the freshest bait possible down there. Whew. Double, y'all. That was exciting. Let's hope we can get some more. There was something popping up right there trying to get a cameo on this video. That fish was trying to steal some camera time right there. I'm going to send him a bill. Daggone him. Get down here and bite one of these hooks if you want to get on this video, fish. Here we go on this head bait. Another time, man. One more time. We're going to get at least one more on it. This feels like a nice fish too, buddy. Nice fish too. He's still taking line. I'm just going to... Oh, no. He come free. No, he didn't. Oh, my gosh. Let's see what our bait looks like. I'm reeling it in funny. Oh, no. He had it all right. Somehow that bait got foul hooked. Oh my gosh. Crap, Ola, man. Well, we had us another pretty good fish on there, y'all. Let's drop this bait back down. Fortunately, with that bait being foul hooked, we probably didn't stick him. He probably just I mean, he obviously felt the resistance as he's taking drag there on my line, but we may have not have, he may not have felt a hook point at all. So maybe he's still down there. Maybe he'll come back for it. Dang, man. I don't know what would have caused that, honestly, because nothing had messed with that bait after we dropped it back down. Well, that's just maybe the way he ate it. I don't know. Boy, that's frustrating when that happens, though. He's back. He's back. Oh, man. That's a nice takedown. I wonder if that's the same fish I lost. I wonder if it is. Maybe it is. Maybe it ain't. We'll never know, but it's a good and nice takedown. Oh, man. That just gets your heart. I mean, you just sitting here totally calm. You know, I ain't got no graph. I can't see these fish coming. All of a sudden, bam. The rod goes over. <laughs> I love it. 
who knows if it's the same one or not. Hopefully this one's hopefully this one's gonna stay buttoned up though. I think the the takedown was awesome. I don't know. He's hardly fighting now. We're just kind of bringing him up. He'll probably take back off when we get him up here near the surface. He'll start thrashing around and think twice of it. This fish is so excited to see you all. He, okay, there he goes. There he goes. Maybe he ain't as excited to see y'all as I thought. He's trying to get away from us now. He says some of you's got bad breath. He don't want to get up here and be face to face with you. This fish, I don't know why he's saying that. I guarantee he ain't never brushed his teeth in his whole life. You old nasty fish. I see the bubbles, but I ain't seen him yet. Yeah, that's a good one. We'll never know if it was the same one that hit a few minutes ago or not, but either way, we got another fish on this head bait. And I still see the head bait in his mouth, so we're going to get it back. Definite preference today for the head bait versus the chunk. They just have not had any interest in that in that chunk. You about ready to calm down and come inside? Yeah, I reckon he is. You're so much better behaved than some of your friends. You are. This fish here's got manners. His parents have, have have taught him well. Yeah, hello to you too. You all hear him talking up there? <laughs> there we go. Look at that. Got that bait back. We're going to reuse it. Fish, get your moment of fame up there with my crooked camera mount. This fish, is, he'll take a moment of fame any way he can get it. He's been waiting to get on Instagram his whole life. All these fish down there, the only thing they got is MySpace. They got outdated technology down there in the catfish world. This one here, let's see if I can spin him around there. You can see that mud on his tail. He's been down there on bottom, kind of hunkered down in that mud. I think, you know, probably as the later the day goes on, these fish are going to turn on and get more active. It's just a, as a later morning bite today. Don't know if it's the same way for the skipjack or not. I've not seen any busting or anything uh, through here, but definitely for the catfish, the later in the morning it's gotten, the more active they've gotten. All right, kitty, let's let you go. He says he'll see us later. Thanks for being calm. That, kid, that fish right there, he's got such good manners. If they would all be like that fish once I get them in, where they're just calm and <laughs> flopping. That one from earlier, buddy, he tried to wreck this whole everything I got in here. Got to be careful bringing fish that's full of energy into a kayak's cockpit with limited space. You bring them in too soon, they thrash around. If you got camera mounts and you know if you got fish finders or whatever you got mounted on your kayak that's when things get broken but anyway let's check out our bait here i don't know why i'm bothering to take a look at it we can't do nothing about it anyway it's still probably in better shape overall than that other head there that we got left in the cooler so i'm gonna drop it back down man these fish they've wanted it today so we're going we're gonna to give them, if they want a head bait, we're going to give them a head bait as long as I got it on there. <laughs> I think we might end up getting another one on this head bait after all. I wasn't sure it was going to happen. Actually, this fish here, he don't feel very big. I wonder if this one ain't got the fly potentially. I don't know if this one's big enough to be able to get that head bait in his mouth unless he just hit it just right in order to be able to get that hook this may be a one of them catfish sumo bait stalker fly type fish right here we'll see when we get him up here he's either eat the fly or he maybe he come up and nipped at the bait and got that fly in the side or the tail or something we'll see here in a second 
Definitely don't think it's the quality that we've got on the last fish. Let's see what we got here. It's a better fish than I thought he was. He has eat the fly though. And he threw the head bait off. You old devil, you. He's better. I honestly didn't think he was that big. I thought it was a smaller fish. He just didn't he just didn't fight very hard. But he did eat the fly. Sure as the world right there. Knocked our head bait off in the process though, baby. We got several fish out of that head. We definitely we definitely got the most use possible out of it. We'll throw on that other the other head we had there first thing on. If I ever get hold of this one. Won't you calm down, buddy? He's soaking up every second he can get on this camera. He said he may he said he may never get a chance to be on my video ever again, so he's gonna make the most of his opportunity. I'm gonna have to use pliers on that fly fish. It don't wanna it don't wanna let you go. There we go. Yeah, that's the goldfish pattern. Bait stalker fly from Catfish Sumo. This fish here, you ain't getting no front camera time. You just enjoy it. Let me turn you into the light here. How about that? I'll do that for you, mangy old fish. He said he'll take what he can get. Get on out of here. Yeah, fly called us another one, but unfortunately, he knocked that head off. Let me get back here in my cooler. We'll get our other, our other head out of here. We'll stick it on there, man. Them two skipjacks that we got, we have, we've maximized them. That's for sure. I was worried when I only had two. I was like, ah, if we're on a good bite, it ain't going to last long. It's went as good as could be expected, or good as we could have hoped for. You can see that bait there, just gravity, you know, with it being just sitting there in that bag and stuff, it's some more blood has come out of there. So we'll drop it down. We'll see if we can maybe catch one or two more here before lunch. I'm gonna, I'm gonna fish probably, I don't know, 30 more minutes, maybe an hour if we're getting bit before I get off the water and go eat. But definitely been a better morning out here so far than what I thought we was gonna have after, after only getting two skipjack. I was worried, man. Heck, before we got them skipjack, you know, I had trolled around a pretty good while before I hooked them to skipjack. I spent quite a bit of time working around this bridge here because lately I've been getting them skipjack just right before sunrise around that bridge. They've been eating shad. You, you could come out and you'd see all kinds of shad and skipjack activity and stuff. And today there wasn't nothing. I saw some carp, some buffalo coming up the surface, but I wasn't seeing the shad. I wasn't seeing the skips. I finally turned and went down that bank and, and made a couple passes and I got them too there. But uh, boy, I'm thankful to get them and we have for dang sure made the most of them. Look right over here. I don't know if you can see or not with the glare, but there's some bubbles coming up from the bottom. Here comes another one over there just beyond my line. There's some more. I think there's a fish kind of rooting around along the bottom there. I wonder if he ain't gonna come over here and find my bait in a second. May or may not be a cat, that could be a carp. Sometimes you, you get carp along the bottom, they're nosing around down there in that mud and, and it releases stuff and you see the bubbles come up. But he's definitely a fish near that bait over there. He better bite quick because I'm about to roll out of here in the next few minutes, y'all. I've sat here a good while now with nothing going on and so it's my lunch time. Finally warmed up. I had to shed some layers out here. Of course, when it's time to go, it's, it's going to finally warm up a little bit, but uh, I am going to give it maybe five, ten more minutes now just to see if whatever's messing around that bait don't end up eating it. But I'll tell you what, whether I catch another fish or not, had a good morning. To only have caught two baits, man, two baits is all you need apparently because we got it done with them. So I've had a dang good time out here. Hope y'all enjoyed. Just special thanks to all of you that continue to watch my videos this time of year. Again, uh, the views just drop off a cliff once you go past Labor Day and it'll stay down all the way up until about spring and you'll see an uptick. So for those of you 
They're year-round fishermen that likes year-round fishing content. I appreciate the heck out of you. Thanks for sticking with me. And thanks in advance to anybody who will comment down there and tell me about this camera and, and how it compares to my other one and give me your thoughts and opinions on it, on what you think about it. But uh, I'm going to get out of here in the next few minutes, go get me a bite to eat, go get Daphne the dog there. And uh, yeah, y'all, I think that fish is just teasing me. I don't even see the bubbles anymore. Daggone fish, man. They just, they got to get the last laugh in on me. I've whooped their tail out here today. I've made them look bad, only having two baits, and that fish there is trying to show me up in the final minutes of this video. Unfortunately for him, little does he know, very few people still watching to this point, so maybe the joke ain't on me after all. But anyway, I'm gonna wrap up a video. If he bites, y'all see it as a bonus fish, and if he don't, well, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.